This is an, a tutorial for calculating simple statistics for finance. Specifically, what we're going to look at is calculating the standard deviation of expected returns, possibly for a project, or we could even use this to calculate expected cash flows and the standard deviation of cash flows. And then we're going to calculate the standard deviation for historic returns. So let's start with the expected returns. We have two formulas we're going to use here. The first one is to calculate the expected return, and that's going to be the sum of each probability for each possible state of the world multiplied by the return for that state of the world and then using that expected return we're going to calculate the standard deviation which is calculated as the expected return for each individual state of the world minus the expected return overall we're going to take that difference squared multiply it by the probability and do that for each of the possible outcomes that we have. Find the sum of that and then take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. So in this example we have uh, a stock or an investment which could provide us three different returns based on three different states of the economy in the next year. Uh, if the co economy goes into a recession there's, we're expected to have a negative 10 percent return in a normal economy, this investment is expected to give us a 6% return. And then in a boom, we're expected to receive a 15% return on this investment. The probabilities for each state of the economy are 15% for the recession, 60% for a normal economy, and 25% for a boom economy. Notice that the probabilities all have to equal to 1. So when we take the sum of those 15% plus 60% plus 25%, we get 100%. So we're covering all of the possible outcomes. So the expected to return is pretty easy to calculate. Um, I'm using the Texas Instruments BHU Plus calculator to do this. It's a common calculator used in finance. One thing that you may want to do um, for this is to change the number of your decimal places to four. We commonly use four decimal places when working with, um, with worth working with returns so we can get to the hundredths place on the return. So, for example, 2% uh, would be 0 0.02, 2.15 per 2.15% would be 0 0.0215. To get to four decimal places on your calculator, just press second, and then the decimal point which has a format above it, and it says DEC because I have set mine set to four. It says four. If I wanted to set it to eight, I just press eight and enter. I don't need that many, uh, so I want to set mine back to 4, so I'm going to press 4, and then enter, clear that out. So now what I'm going to do is calculate the expected return. To do that, I'm going to take the probability for each state of the economy and multiply it by the expected return in that economy, and then take the sum. So in the first case, I have 15% multiplied by a negative 10% return, which gives me negative 0.0, uh, gives me negative 1.5% or negative 0. Uh, 0.0150. I'm going to use my storage buttons on my calculator so I don't have to write everything down. So I'm going to press stow and then 1. In the second case, I have a 60% probability of a 6% return. So in that case, I have 3.6%. I'm going to store that as 2. And in the last case, I have a 25% probability, 0.25, multiplied by a 15% return, is 3.75%. So now to find my expected return overall, I add those numbers up. to get 5.85 percent. Okay. The standard deviation then again is calculated as taking each of the expected returns. So the 10 percent, the 6 percent, and the 15 percent. Subtracting the expected return by those, each of those. Squaring that and multiplying it by the probability and then finding the sum of that and taking the square root. So in this case to make my life a little easier, I'm going to store this number, the expected return, is in uh, 
slot 9 here. So I press STO and then 9. And now I'm going to take 0 0.10 negative minus recall 9. And then I'm going to square that and multiply it by my probability of 0.15. And I'm going to store that as number 1. It's really handy here to not write these down and then re try to put them back in your calculator because you're going to get some very small numbers but then it, when we square them or yeah when we take the square root of those sorry when we take the square root of that it's going to become a larger number so it's better to not write them down and put them back in your calculator just store them in your calculator because it's going to store that smaller number better uh, rather than rounding it so um, again I'm going to store that as one I'm going to clear that out I'm going to take 0.06 minus my expected return of 5.85% to get 0.0015. I'm going to square that. It's going to look like nothing, but we still need to work with it. And then I'm going to multiply that by 0.6, my probability. I'm going to store that as number 2. The last case, I'm going to take 0.15 minus... square that and take multiply that by 0.25 and then store that as number three so now I've taken I found the differences between the uh, expected return for the individual state of the world and the uh, expected return overall I squared that difference and then I multiplied it by the probability now I'm going to take those numbers add them together, so I'm going to find the sum of that, which is 0.0059. I'm going to take the square root. That gives me a standard deviation of 7.66%. Okay. So that's how to calculate the expected return and standard deviation of a forward-looking project where we have probabilities for each state of the world. All right, so our second example is calculating the standard deviation of historic returns. And for this, I've chosen Ford Motor Stock and looking at the months July 2012 through the beginning of 2013, so looking at the full month of December 2012. As you can see, they didn't have a very good time during this time period with a negative 11.3% return in September and a negative 9.51% return in November. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is calculate the average return. To do that, I'll start at the top, 0 0.0098 negative plus 0 0.0951 negative plus 0 0.017 negative plus Now I'm going to store that, store that up here, uh, we'll say number 9, so I'm going to press STO, STO, 9, and then clear. That's just going to make my calculations a lot easier from here on out. So I'll start at the top. Now what I'm going to do is take the return for that month, subtract out the average return, and take the square of that difference. At the end I'm going to add all those together for all six months and then uh, divide that by 6, t is 6, so 6 months, minus 1 or 5. So I'll start at the top, point zero zero nine eight negative minus my average return. So there's the difference. Now I'm going to square that difference. I'm going to store that as number 1. I'll take point zero oh nine five. The average return. I'm going to square that. Store that as number 2. Take 0 0.017 negative minus my expected return. I'm going to square that. And store that as number 3. Now, my 
mind you, this is kind of an example here of why you want to use the calculator and store these numbers rather than writing them down. Because this is a very small number, but then at the end, when we take the, um, the square root of this, it actually becomes quite a bit larger. If you were just to write down 0 0.0001, you're not going to really get the actual number that you should. For the next month, I'm going to pick 0.1138 negative minus the expected return. I'm just going down the months. One, two, three, four. I'm at month five. Point zero zero two eight minus expected return. Square root of that. Store that as number five. Then finally, their one good month uh, during this this six month period. Point zero eight five four minus the expected return. Take the square of that store that as number 6. need to redo that now. 0 0.0854 minus my expected return. Take the square of that. Store that as number 6. There we go. All right, now I'm going to take the sum of all those returns. I'm going to divide that by 5, and then I'm going to take the square root to get 7.22. So my standard deviation in this case is 7.22%. And that is the end of this tutorial. We've calculated the expected return for future uh, expected returns and the standard deviation of that return. And then we calculated the average return over a six-month period for Ford Motor Company, found the standard deviation of those monthly returns.